This is the entrance of the west side of Highgate Cemetery and this is the older side. And directly over the road from that is the entrance to the east side. Both of them uh, charge an entrance fee to go in. We've just come in the west side. The ticket to view both sides is £10. It's booked online, but I suspect we'll need more than a day to see both these sides. It's a vast cemetery. Edward Bloor, architect, born in Derby, 1787, and died in London in 1879. As we walk up, we're passing a number of graves of military people, Royal Naval people, uh, solicitors. This is the family tomb of General Sir Loftus Otway and numerous members of his family. There are just so many amazing uh, stones here and interesting inscriptions. It's quite impossible to take them all in. There are even some more modern ones here. We've got Peter Jackson, artist and London historian, who died in 2003. And another more modern one, Man Fong Mi. Professor and pioneer of Chinese medicine, poet, physicist and philosopher, who died 2014. Right opposite is, is Colonel Henry Spencer, Honourable East India Company Service, who died in 1857. Well, that was the year of the uprisings in India. Maybe he was a, a casualty of that. Willem Lodden. Yule, architect and born in Australia in 1920 and died here in 2010. The guide was just explaining to me that you can still be buried in this uh, graveyard, in this cemetery, both in the east or the west. This side is more expensive than the east and the qualifications are only that you are dead. Uh, <laughs> it can only be, you can't pre-book a spot. You has to be done by your descendants to bury you here and whether you've got the money to do it. This is the Rossetti uh, family area. Gabrielle Rossetti, um, William Michael Rossetti and, uh, and others. Christina Rossetti is also here. Rosilla Burt, who survived three husbands. A much loved and courageous lady. Well, what can one say? This one here is for the Dorks family, Samuel Whitfield Dorks, and the whole sort of family history written on that stone. This is John McLennan, physician general, late of the presidency of Bombay and he died in 1874. A family grave of Sir Herbert H. Bartlett and several of his children. Next door is the family vault of Robert James Stookley. 
the tomb of the Bashaw family, Reverend William Bashaw. And next door is the tomb of Peter Bodkin, Esquire, 1820. And Sir William Henry Bodkin Knight, who is his son, a bencher of Grey's Inn, Recorder of Dover and Assistant Judge for this county. The Catacomb of P. W. Talbot of Haverstock Hill. Major Gabbett Beer. Family Vault of George Dorman Kaiser. The Family Vault of Thomas William Woodgate. Henry Pierce Hughes, Fanny Harriet Pussy, the vault of John Aird, Mabel Veronica Batten, Professor David Edward Hughes. Edward Labas Very large one here, almost a small chapel in its own right. The family mausoleum of James Anderson Kelman, whoever he was. There's one here which is sacred to the memory of Sir Roland Hill and he says he's actually interred in Westminster Abbey. Of course a well-known uh, person. Up here we have Edward Headland, a surgeon. Nice clear stone up there. Ishmael Quinton. Late of the narrow road. Charles Henry Lovell. Geoffrey Morgan. This is his family tomb and he's of Silverpool Road, Islington. He seems to have bagged a very good spot in the cemetery. Thomas Frost, late of Nottingham, who died at his residence, St John's Park, Holloway. And there is a huge one here, bigger than most people's homes, and the name at the top is Shaylus Moor. Massive building. Just here is an even larger one. And this is the mausoleum of Julius Beer. Huge building, higher than any house, any multi-story house. I estimate one, two, three, probably five stories tall. 
you can't imagine how many memorials there are here. We're seeing the ones next to the path, but it goes back and back. There are hundreds behind this main path of uh, it probably is very interesting memorials. <laughs> of course, the those wealthy people got the spots next to the path, but. Um, It is just unbelievable, this graveyard. This is the stone to Lily White, who founded the Lily White Sports Stores. And on the bottom of the gravestone, you'll see uh, cricket stumps and two bats, and the bales are off the stumps. So basically, he is out, Mr. Lily White. Here's a an unusual one. This is sacred to the memory of Thomas Sayers, uh, born at Pimlico, Brighton, and he's got his image of his dog lying at the foot of his tomb. Here's one to Addison Cresswell, manager, agent, producer, and champion of comedy, who died in 2013, and he's put on the bottom. I'll end it on this. There's one here, the name is indecipherable, but on top is a horse. Over on the wall there, the very large stone, is for Michael Faraday. And as you and his wife Sarah, um, Michael Faraday, 80, 1791, died 1867. Richard Diamant, Chief Goods Manager of the Great Northern Railway, 34 years in the service of that company. Here's a modern one. Charles Rowlatt, died 2017, medical researcher and toy designer. Very interesting to know what toys he did design. The Arnold Family Vault. Sir Benjamin Hawes, KCB. Jeremiah Gretorix Hangs William Allen W.R. States The Family Sepulchre of Matthew Wharton Johnson Fitzroy Square Philip Connorsby died 2008 Art Historian and Chevalier de la Légion d'Honneur. This is one to Andrew Morton, an artist of no ordinary merit. And he was born at Newcastle upon Time in 1802, died in London 1845. He was on the eve of being elected an associate of the Royal Academy. He suddenly died. Unusual memorial here, which looks like a pile of stones, but there is actually a plaque on the bottom there for William. I can't see the rest. It makes a change from the usual gravestones we have here. There's a stone here to Alexander Litvenko. Uh, if you remember, he was murdered by Russian agents, died a very long and painful death. Stone is to Sasha. We now crossed over to the east side, which are the slightly newer graves, and we'll just see what we can observe on this side of the of the road.
The stones are still fairly grand, but not as large, at least here, as those on the, um, the earlier half of the cemetery on the west side. One here for John McKinley, a uh, chartered engineer, uh, formerly engineer-in-chief of the Indian Navy and JP of the city of Bombay. There's the statue of Karl Marx, responsible for more misery in this world than most. Charles Troward, died 1873, Institute of Mechanical Engineers. Alfred Tiffin, 1873, and Alfred his son, and his wife Emma. John Henderson Smith and his wife Jessie, and they have managed to get the likeness um, of their profiles onto the stone and at the bottom here underneath the inscription is a ship so presumably there's some significance to that one here to John Ferguson a shipbuilder of Leith Here's one that is often photographed. This is for Patrick Caulfield and his wife Janet Nathan Caulfield and the cutouts in the stone spell the word dead. One here to the television presenter Jeremy Beadle who died in 2008 and there are four books there, one lying on its side. I'm not quite sure of the significance and the writing on the stone says, Ask My Friends. Writer, presenter, curator of oddities. And the stone to Malcolm McLaren, Malcolm Robert Andrew McLaren, died 2010. Better a spectacular failure than a benign success. Alan Howard, actor, Sally Bowman, writer. Not names I recognise, but no doubt somebody will. Here's one with an image in memory of George Honey, comedian. Died 1880. There are a few of the war graves uh, as you wander through the cemetery. This one is T.A. Pryor, London Rifle Brigade, just 34 years old, died in 1921. Another one nearby for Flight Lieutenant H. Wilson, MBE, RAF, 1951, aged 46. There's a memorial here to William Freeze Green, 1855-1921. He was the inventor of cinematography films. Obviously of Penguin Books, rather nicely done. So that's it folks, masses to see, far too much to try and take in on one day. You could spend weeks here and still find little snippets of interest. I highly recommend it. And that's it, see you next time.